Who created us? Alhamdulillah. Who created our feelings and emotions that we experience day in and day out? Do you think that Allah created something negative? So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created those emotions? So that we can feel them. So that we can experience them. So there is no such thing as negative emotion. The problem is that sometimes those emotions are intense. Sometimes they are more harder than others. Or our culture taught us that men don't cry. And I remember my father, may Allah have mercy on him. When I, do, when I used to do something wrong as, you know, growing up boys, naughty boys, and my father would slap me, that's the Egyptian slash Pakistani style of parenting, <laughs> of parenting, right? So I would, as a kid, I would be like going like this, and then my father would not like me as a boy now going to cry, so he would say, show me one tear. Look at that, and he will not continue. Like, he will not say, what will happen if I show him that tear? He wouldn't continue. But you will understand that if a tear flows on your cheek, you're dead. <laughs> That's the warning. So we would be like holding in all this intense emotion, and we will not show it up. Why? Because men don't cry. Men are taught from very, very young age that you should hold these emotions in. You shouldn't show your tears to others. Because if you do so, supposedly you're not a man. Well, like, this is what people taught us, right? Otherwise, why we grew up, the majority of you raised up their hands. That means in the, not just in the Egyptian culture or in the Pakistani culture or the Egyptian culture or in the Asian culture, culture, the Filipino culture. Men should stand any challenges without shedding a tear. But you look at the Prophet ﷺ, this was not the case. You look at the life of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, this is not the case. And this is what we're going to learn today, inshallah. But what is emotional intimacy? This is something we need to define before we move on, inshallah. Ta'ala. Anyone can share with me what the thoughts about emotional intimacy? Because the word intimacy, when it is mentioned, we think of completely something physical. Right? Yes. Right? But actually, that's not always the case. That's not always the case. So what, who can tell me what is emotional intimacy? Raise up your hand if you can express something, inshallah, with me. Bismillah. Anyone? None? Allahu Akbar. I love it. Yes, sister. Being what? Being close emotionally. You are, you are very close. Being close emotionally means I assume that you, you're okay with your emotions? Is that, is that what you mean? Yes? Expressing your emotions, good one. What was that? Who's talking? Attachment to your emotion, huh? Who else? Acknowledgement to your emotions and sadness. Anyone at the back can shout at me. I can see you, but I cannot hear you, sister. <laughs> I don't know if you can shout or tell a man in the front to shout back. I still can't hear. Emotional intimacy means, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is to be okay with your internal experiences. To be all right. When you feel sad, don't try to fight it. That's what you're experiencing. Like imagine if I receive a phone call and your father passed away. Will you be happy? Will you feel like, oh, yoo-hoo. The natural reaction to something like this is what? Sadness, you cannot alter that. You cannot alter that. So you have to learn to be okay with whatever emotions you're going through. And emotions, my brothers and sisters, are just like waves. You know the waves of the sea? They go up high and then what happens? They subside and then they become very calm at the seashore. And then we take a cycle. It takes cycle to experience different set of emotions because the situations will change and so on and so forth. Now, how can we as Muslims, inshallah ta'ala, be okay with our emotions? How can we become intimate with our own inter internal experiences without impacting our attitude or without doing anything that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
This is what we're going to discuss, inshallah. And I have seven points for you, inshallah. Seven points, yeah? First, let me read it. <laughs> the first one is, are you ready? I can't hear anything. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah Jazakallah khair, brother. May Allah bless you, Arab. Let me hold this phone here. So, the first point is, do not apologize for your tears. Do not apologize for your tears. How many of you, especially sisters, I believe, you cried in front of your friend or someone, and then you said, I'm sorry that I cried. I didn't mean to cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm sorry. How many? Raise up your hand. <laughs> the question is, the question is, why would you tell someone, sorry because I'm crying? Like, why in the world do we have to apologize for our tears? This is my experience. And you want to hear a secret? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. So nice. I know. You, you, hear this, my brothers and sisters. Understand. Some people, they say, I tell you why. Why I do not prefer to cry in front of the people. You know why? Because you don't want the other person to be impacted by your tears. That's what it is. That's the most sensible answer. But actually, if the person that you are talking to and you cried in front of him did not like your tears, he don't deserve to be your friend. She don't deserve to be your friend. They don't deserve to be your company. Like imagine my wife is complaining about something that she went through and I tell her, hey, listen, I don't want headaches. Can you imagine that I don't deserve to be a husband to that lady? And vice versa. If the husband is coming, uh, coming to you and tell you, listen, I, I, this is what happened at work and oh my God, you're always whinging about everything and anything. Can you imagine? That's why, that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet Muhammad when he experienced something terrifying, he ran to the person that he trusted the most. Who was that? Khadija radiallahu We will talk about her story in a minute. But crying, crying was something very common during the time of the, of the Prophet and his companions. The, it, it was reported by one of the companions that said that the Prophet وسلم, ascended the pulpit and he spoke and he gave a speech that we have never heard of before. The Prophet وسلم, was saying that if you knew what I know, you would laugh very little and weep most of your time. So the companions, all of them in the masjid, they covered their face and they sobbed. Another companion was reporting that I heard the sniffing and the cries of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda while I was in the last row of the masjid and he was in the front. He was in the front row reciting or leading the jama'ah and one at the last row here he heard Umar ibn al-Khattab crying, sobbing, with sniffing. Subhanallah azim. No one dared to say that, oh, hey, didn't you hear? Men don't cry. Hide your teeth, bro. Man up. Toughen up. What is this? Where do we get this from? Why are we suppressing our emotions? We suppress our children growing up. Hey, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do that. If you cry, tsh. And then they grow up. You know what, what will happen when they grow up? They will repeat the same cycle. They will think that this... This is the way how I was brought up, and it must be right. It must be right. The Prophet ﷺ received the news of the death of his son. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our parents from experiencing something like this. Wallahi, I, I, I cannot visualize this to myself. Like when I visualize this for me, losing my son, losing my daughter, I can't visualize. I cannot imagine how will I react to such news. One of the heaviest things any parents can go through. And if you, any of the audience have experienced this, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala substitute the loss with something far better, bi'idhillahi ta'ala, if not in this dunya, in Jannatul Firdaus, because of your patience. Ameen. Say Ameen. Ameen. But the Prophet himself went through the same experience. And what happened? Was he laughing? Was he smiling? Was he saying, Khalas, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raja'un bari him? Is it like anyone else? No, he was weeping. And even the companions couldn't fathom, how could a prophet cry? 
And he said that cries, tears is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that purifies the heart. I was talking to a sister in the room back, in the back side, you know, the, the speaker's room. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And the sister embraced Islam. She took shahada. And I explained to the sister, alhamdulillah, and I explained to the sister that, you know, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced all your past sins with good ones. So all these bad deeds that you did in the past, Allah convert them into good deeds. And all your existing good deeds that you perform while you're a non-Muslim will remain good deeds in your account. So basically you are the purest amongst all of us. And there were a bunch of sisters around us. All of us, I said, you are the purest amongst all of us. And as I said that, the sisters start crying. She said, you touched my heart. I said, sister, I didn't touch anything, you see? <laughs> <laughs> but the sister was moved to tears, subhanAllah al-Azim. And this is something like she experienced internally. And, and this is the thing that will motivate that sister to practice Islam in the future. This moment, a change of a heart. Why? Because she let her emotions just flow. That's, that's her experience. We have to support people when they cry. Don't tell them, hey, don't cry. Don't, oh, okay, I will not cry then. It's like how I wish it was that simple. Hey, don't cry, bro. Mm -hmm. oh, mm. We are not robots. We're not machines. We are human beings. The Prophet ﷺ was holding his child, infant son, Ibrahim. Weeping, and the description was that his beard was so wet to an extent that it started dripping beneath his feet. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he was not just crying, he was telling the people, Inna al-ayna la tadma' My eyes are shedding tears. Who speaks like that? Who really say when he cry, I am crying? No one. But this was the way how the Prophet sallallahu coped. This was his coping mechanism with the pain that he was experiencing by telling the people, my eyes are shedding tears. My heart is shattered. But we only say what, please, what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So despite the pain, despite the emotions that make you feel weak, that make you feel down, dragged down to your lowest, despite all of that, we will only do what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. We belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. But the tears were there. So if you wanted to be intimate with your own internal experience, number one, do not apologize for your tears. Do not hold them back. You know, alhamdulillah, my family are not here. <laughs> but when I was, uh, I don't know if you knew, I wrote a book called My Wheelchair. My Wheelchair. My Journey of Getting Back Up on My Feet. Now some people, they think that this is a novel an imaginary story. This actually, this book was written while I was bedridden, while I was basically paralyzed ways down as a result of a mass massive injury in my back. And there was nothing actually like, you know, because I know people say, oh, so what happened? What, ha what happened? Did you fall off a cliff or something? Or did you, did you have an accident? Nothing happened. I was washing my hands. I did not do anything other than following the government's, you know, instructions, wash your hands, COVID is after you. So I went to wash my hands. And as I was washing my hands, a crashing pain went through my left leg, waist, and I was pinned to the ground for a few hours. My family ran, my wife, my daughter, every time they, they lift me up. I will scream to the top of my lung out of pain because the flaring pain will shoot throughout my body. Two days later, the same pain was felt, but on the other side. After this moment, I was not able to feel my feet. And depression? Have you heard this word before? Yeah, Sheikh Wael went through this path. Excruciating pain on all levels. And when you experience physical pain, Anyone went through physical pain here? Raise up your hand. Allah is your pain, Ya When you experience that physical pain, I want you to confirm those who raise up their hands. You are also experiencing mental draining and emotional pain. True or false? It's not just the physical part. Everything is impacted. 
Every aspect of your existence is impacted. And my, my wife, may Allah bless her, she will come to me and say, shh, the neighbors. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? <It's laughs> shh, the neighbors, what are you doing? She has a point, but I, I couldn't. I, it's not like I plan, okay, now it's the time to scream. Bismillah, one, two, three. Ah, no. It's just, it's just something difficult to bear. So, and this is the way I felt is the appropriate way to cope with that pain. But because it was suppressed, the pain was actually doubled. Wallahi, the pain was doubled. One painful experience is the physical pain that I go through and the second one is the fear of your wife <laughs> she, you know that she's coming after you hey shh, the neighbors but when I ignored that message the pain was subsided when I let it out when I decided uh, I want to cry oh, oh, oh. Hafiz TV, unique every day.